but there we go. Open space for, for facilities management. That's really the, uh, uh, the topic for today. But kind of first up, uh, thanks for joining, guys. This is the fourth one in the EMEA webinar series. Um, it is nice, uh, great to have you with us. Um, as usual, these are kind of aimed at us connecting with you and, and sort of providing some valuable information, examples, use cases, that kind of good stuff. Um, as always, we're planning on doing more of them. So if there are any topics you'd be interested in, let us know in the chat. Uh, a bit of housekeeping, we're recording the session that should be distributed to all the attendees, whether they dialed in or not, uh, after uh, the call. and. Um, yeah, we're kind of excited to be uh, to be talking about uh, facilities management. So looking in a little bit more detail, exactly what we're going to go through. You guys can see that there on, on um, the agenda slide. We'll do some introductions very shortly. Um, I'm going to take the, the virtual coordination of O&M work today, and, and Wesley is going to take uh, the using open space to minimize downtime. Uh, of course, as always, We'll run through the topics listed and then we'll open it up for, for Q&A, um, but please go ahead and, and ask questions in the chat feature along the way if you'd like to. Um, let's have a look at, uh, at who's who then. Uh, so introductions. There we go. Uh, we've um, we've got a couple of us on, on today, really. So um, I'm joined by my colleague in the customer success team, Wesley uh, DuBose. He's got a wealth of industry knowledge. Uh, he's come from open space directly from um, a construction organization. Uh, and I'm actually gonna let him introduce himself first. So Wesley, over to you. Thank you, Jack. Um, so good morning, uh, Maria in Ungak. Um, I am Wes DeBose. I'm actually in Texas. Uh, so as you all are enjoying your lunch, um, I'll be probably getting a coffee here shortly. It's uh, 6.09 a.m. over here. I'm happy to be with you all today. Uh, like Jack said, I come from the industry. I used to be a uh, project manager in commercial construction, um, helping build large hospital projects here in Texas. And actually, uh, the, the contractor I work for, we also had a service division. Um, and I spent a lot of time working closely with facilities managers um, of a lot of my customers. Uh, so I'm uh, very in tune with the facilities management uh, side of the industry. And um, I feel like it's kind of a, a benefit of open space that people uh, don't really see or see any use case for. Um, and I'm excited to show you all today about how you can use facilities management or how you can use open space to improve the facilities management within uh, your organization. Um, Jack, I will also say that uh, I'm not sure if it's just my screen, but your screen share looks a little glitchy right now. It's like half one slide, half the other. You might want to stop your screen share and try resharing. That's there we that. go. We're, we're good here. It just loaded. Is that better? That's come back up. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. What about now? Is that, has that gone funny again? No, you're still good. We can still okay. see it. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Wesley. Um, and um, yeah, introduction to myself, guys, uh, customer success associate, just like Wesley in the customer success team. Um, I do actually come from industry myself as well. Not nearly as much experience as Wesley there. I sort of started off in a design office um, and then uh, went out onto site for a little bit. But I've been working in construction technology for the past almost 10 years now. Um, you know, implementing uh, common data environments mostly and sort of project management tools uh, and now here at Open Space. So um, I, I'm actually going to, to sort of kick us off on uh, the first topic here, guys, looking at that uh, virtual coordination um, uh, of O&M work. Um, and we're going to look at, uh, at sort of using Open Space for, for those QA uh, and QC and, and virtual coordination. And there's really um, two main aspects that, that I want to touch on for this first section. Um, I might not take as much time as Wesley because uh, I think his is, is the more interesting part of, uh, of today's uh, uh, webinar. Um, but the two things that I want to touch on really are our reveal mode and some recent updates that we've uh, released to our field notes functionality. Obviously, as they both pertain to this particular topic that, that we're talking about, so that facilities management piece. Now, one of the nice things that we've heard about open space as a product from you know a number of our customers is that it can really be used in a lot of different ways, pretty expansive uh, across a lot of different stages uh, as well. So um, we've had a couple of customers who are who are a bit more involved with you know sort of whole life cycles, so right from uh, cradle to grave, if that's the right term. Um, it really can help customers who are in that business of buy, build, manage, and sell 
Um, and we'll probably focus more on the, the manage aspect of that today and maybe some of the build components, uh, but focusing initially more on those types of customers who are looking at perhaps acquiring uh, properties. We've seen really big use cases for things like uh, pre-bid walkthroughs, you know, before you've even decided to kind of acquire and, and uh, you know, renovate a space, um, those sort of one-time walkthroughs to let you uh, or help you evaluate that. Um, and also looking at the, the sort of field notes aspect, um, kind of a, assessing a site before you, you sort of put shovels in the ground um, and, and decide to, to start doing things. Uh, but in terms of, of open space being used for a more sort of holistic uh, life cycle, because you tend or customers tend to use open space throughout that whole process. So, you know, as, as you're constructing, as walls are going up, uh, ceilings are getting hung, it could be concrete that, that is getting poured. Um, as you're capturing, you know, frequently uh, as that happens, usually we recommend once or twice a week, but certainly we've got customers doing um, a lot more frequent than that. Um, you're, you're actually starting to, to sort of uh, capture a, a digital twin. Okay, so capturing pre and post activity, um, you're generating that digital twin that really allows the ability to start looking behind the scenes um, and, you know, things like seeing through walls and floors, uh, which sounds a little bit strange, but I will clarify, um, being able to get that visual historic record um, a little bit further down the line. And that's really provided to be, uh, I guess, absolutely invaluable to that manage side of, of the business, um, like uh, facilities managers and property managers. Um, and, and it kind of starts to get you to think a little bit more about open space. It's not necessarily, um, you know, just the construction aspect of a project, but it also can, you know, keep it going, keep it running into the actual uh, management side. So um, open space in a lot of uh, examples that we've got is really giving the ability to sort of turn up on site, um, you know, sites that it's been used for in the past and you know, see through walls. So good examples of hospitals where they've, before they perform refurb and, and renovation work and, and Wes will be aware of this with the projects he was involved with, um, being able to kind of look and see what is going on behind that wall based on the evidence that was captured previously. Um, also been pretty massive for uh, insurance claims, you know, and, and improving past conditions uh, of things versus the current conditions, um, if nothing else, really making that a, a nice speedy process as well as actually uh, you know making sure that those claims um, uh, sort of go in your favor also really save people uh, a lot of rework and a lot of time in reviewing you know that that current state of things as well uh, so also on the side of stuff like facilities management calling things out having those reportable items so using those field notes again not just in that construction phase to, to pull up issues or observations and whatnot uh, kind of using it as a way of labeling things after the fact um, and, and pulling up uh, things that need to be repaired on site that sort of thing um, you know once uh, once things are up and running so um, I'm going to kind of jump out of um, uh, the, the slide deck now and, and show you something that, that should be uh, pretty interesting, guys. Let me come out of there. And we're going to jump over to um, this reveal mode. Now, um, I think I've turned the volume down. Uh, this is a really great example, and I'll go full screen here. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Wes, you keep me honest and make sure that everybody else can. This guy, um, he's actually stood in... Uh, in a building that is complete, okay, so you can see him on the left there, the building he's standing in is um, the site that, that, you know, was constructed. So what you're seeing here on the phone is not current, it is him looking in open space at previous conditions as the building that he's currently standing in was being constructed. So as you bear that in mind, and I hit this play video, and again, you shouldn't be hearing any sound here, guys, I've, I've turned that down, I'll sort of talk you through it. What you'll see is um, he's kind of jumped into this almost augmented reality kind of um, uh, way of looking at things. So he's actually looking around in the room that was captured previously. And that's what we're seeing, that previous capture. And as he starts to slide that scroll bar at the bottom, the camera is on the left and that 360 capture is on the right. He's able to actually look. And if I quickly pause here, he's able to actually look at the conditions 
um, and the things that are there behind the scenes. It's giving him this kind of X-ray mode. You know, he looked at the wall a minute ago. He's now looking down at the floor. And as he sort of peels back um, current reality to reveal a previous capture in open space, it's giving him that ability to actually, you know, see things. Uh, so he can see where rebar is. He can see where potentially cables are and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and, and that sort of speaks to, uh, if I hop back into uh, our slide deck, guys, uh, that speaks uh, a little bit more um, to that point that we made uh, earlier, whereby, you know, you can actually start to see through walls. You can see behind things. You don't have to get, you know, sort of um, destructive uh, with stuff to, to see a, exactly what is going on. Uh, so I know I sort of started with the uh, with the end uh, there in in some senses, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's proved to be a really valuable tool. And of course, it's not going to replace actually using some sort of sensor tool to identify where there's perhaps high voltage cables and and things like that. Um, you know, that's not re really where we're going with that. But it does give you a lot more context and knowledge as to uh, what is potentially now hidden. Okay. Um, and I'm taking up a, a fair chunk of time here, guys, but the other aspect, just before I hand over to, uh, to Wesley, was um, looking at um, the, 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 the latest uh, updates to our field notes, specifically attachments and uh, field notes, and how that um, uh, sort of relates and, and pertains to, uh, to this uh, facilities management that we're talking about. So I have got a, a demo project up here, guys. Um, it's perhaps not the best example, but I'm sure you guys will get the picture. Um, if you've been on the previous webinars, then you'll definitely have seen field notes before. And really, it's talking again to this point of um, you don't just have to use field notes for uh, the obvious things. And, you know, we we kind of built them in a way that you can, uh, you know, we give you the framework. You guys start to use field notes for what you want. They're, they're customizable with their tags and, you know, you can attach things to them now, which which makes this pretty useful. So. Just an example here, guys, you know, expand it to other pieces of equipment and, and sort of things that you have to manage as part of a facility. Um, we just raised a field note here and we dropped it in there. We created a specific tag for it called electrical compliance. Uh, what we're saying in this field note is that, yeah, that particular fridge, it's got a test certificate. Um, you know, see the, uh, the due date that we've added to that, that that's going to kind of remind me when that test certificate is coming up for renewal. And we need to uh, we need to get that updated. And we've actually, you know, uh, attached that as an attachment. So if I click on that, it's going to drop in. And this is just a, you know, sort of dummy certificate here, guys. Um, but you can start to see that sort of application and how that might scale across an entire project, especially when you know that you can jump into the field notes section. We can start to filter based on those tags. Uh, there's only one in here at the moment, guys. But let's say we've got 1,500 fridges uh, in, in, a, in a block or 1,500 pieces of equipment. Um, very nice and easy to filter those uh, based on tags, based on dates, statuses, um, you know, jump straight to them, all that kind of good stuff, uh, and even generate reports um, if that's something uh, that, that you guys are interested in doing to, to manage facilities as well as use open space in, in that sort of construction period as well. Um, so I'll hop back to the slide deck. That is uh, sort of pretty much it from, from me, really. Um, Wes, I'll, I'll hand over to you now. Do you want to take control of screen or do you want me to click through? Um, I can take control from you. You go ahead. All right. So can you all see my screen OK? Got you, Wes. All right. Um, so hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you all about uh, building life cycle costs, um, what they are, and uh, why I think they're so important. And then where open space fits in and how you can use open space to minimize the downtime on your facilities. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off with talking about uh, what building life cycle costs are. Um, so for those of you who may be unaware, a building life cycle cost is going to be the total cost associated with a facility ownership. Um, so, so from all the way from the initial design uh, process, the conception, the design of the building, to all the costs associated with construction, all the way into all the operations and maintenance costs throughout the building's life cycle. Um, so you can really break a building's life cycle costs out into two buckets. Um, one is going to be the design and construction phase, and the other is going to be the operations and uh, maintenance phase of the building's life cycle. Um, and each bucket uh, accounts for a certain percentage of the building's total life cycle cost. 
Uh, and whenever I first learned this, it was kind of jarring to me. I always thought construction, uh, you know, you hear of these, you know, uh, multi-million dollar projects going on, you think that's probably going to be the most amount of money you're going to be putting into that building as during that design and construction process. Um, but it actually, I came to found out that uh, design and construction only accounts for about 30% of a building's total life cycle cost. Um, and operations and maintenance typically cost about 70% of uh, the building's total life cycle cost. Um, so this was kind of unexpected to me. Uh, I'm not sure if it is for y'all, but um, it really highlights the importance of facilities management to me. Uh, I, I feel like in this industry, facilities management is something that can kind of get easily overlooked. Um, I feel like a lot of the resources and focuses with buildings is kind of focused on that construction phase. And uh, facilities management can a lot of times be kind of personnel as well as resource uh, light. Um, and that can reflect in you, uh, you know, spending a lot more money on the 70% here um, and not getting as much ROI from your facilities you could be doing. Um, also, you can see in parentheses here that I put not including human capital costs. Uh, so you can actually break um, a building's life cycle cost into three separate buckets if you want, uh, which is design and construction, operations and maintenance, and then your human capital costs. Your human capital costs is the cost of the people that actually staff your facility. Um, so all of the, the workers, all the paid salary and wage workers, um, all the money that you pay to them benefits and otherwise. Uh, to have them you know, work for your organization and uh, you know, utilize the facility. Uh, so if you factor in the human capital cost, um, it actually paints a little bit of a different picture here. Uh, you can see that design and construction and operations and maintenance only accounts for about 10% of the building's total life cycle cost. And uh, your human capital cost, your personnel salaries, accounts for about 90% of the total money you're ever going to put in a, a facility during its life cycle. Um, so this is uh, really important and kind of where open space fits in is you want to minimize the downtime in your facility. Uh, not only do you want, you know, an efficient 70% right here for your operations and maintenance costs, but also whenever you're factoring in your uh, human capital costs. Uh, if there's ever a time where you're having to shut down a part of your facility to go and coordinate operations and maintenance work um, and execute it, uh, that means you're shutting down a part of your, your facility that the, uh, the workers within your facility cannot utilize. Um, so you're paying towards this 90% for your human capital cost, but they're not able to use that part of your facility and put your uh, organization's, you know, mission to use and add value to your organization. Um, so you're cutting into your ROI, ROI, not only with your operations and maintenance, but also with your uh, human capital cost because they're not able to utilize your facility. Um, so open space is uh, where we can fit in and kind of help you minimize the downtime in your facilities and provide somewhat of a solution here. Um, so I created an example for us over here in an open space project that I can walk you through. Um, so in this project right here, this is a telephone room within uh, this one story um, office fit out. And uh, let's say hypothetically, this is um, you know, a highly trafficked telephone room. Employees are using it all the time to close deals, have meetings, things like that. And you've been getting the complaint that the, uh, the air coming out of this diffuser is too loud. Um, it's just too much air pressure and it's, it's not allowing for quality phone calls. Um, so it's been decided that you need to go in and you need to upsize the stuck to lower that air pressure and um, allow for uh, you know, that noise to be remediated. Um, so what I did is I came in here and on our diffuser right here, I created a field note. And you can see I assigned my status to it. I added uh, the, you know, the team member uh, who happens to have the same name as me uh, to the alert list. Um, he's the one that needs to come in here and upsize the stuck. I've assigned my tag. I created a custom facilities management tag so I can come in and filter by all my facilities management issues. I have my due date. And then you can see my description here. I put a facilities management tracker, um, work to be performed on the duct and diffuser in the phone room along with the, uh, the, the tag for this room. Now you can see I commented it down here that the duct right needs to be upsized. See attached document for above ceiling configuration. And you can see I attached a document over here. What I did is I went back in time in open space to before uh, the ceiling tile was hung. So I'm actually able to look above the ceiling tile and see what that above ceiling configuration is. Um, so if we go ahead and look at the document that I attached, you can see this is what it looks like. So you can see I'm able to virtually go in here and see what's actually happening above the ceiling tile without needing to shut down the facility, without needing to kick workers out. I don't need to bring a ladder in there and move ceiling tile. I'm able to kind of see everything, uh, you know, from the comfort of my desk. And I can see, you know, okay, the, the main thing, the main issue I'm seeing here is there's a cable tray running underneath this duct. 
So if I'm going to upsize this duct, um, you know, this is an unforeseen condition that I'm going to have to, uh, you know, take care of and remediate in order for me to come in and cut out the duct and replace it. Um, so instead of me, you know, having to go into the building and physically look above there and, uh, you know, implement downtime on the facility, I'm able to use open space to go in, see what needs to be done and virtually coordinate that work. Where the only time I'm going to need to shut down my facility is whenever I'm going in to perform the actual work. Um, so this can help really minimize that downtime on your facility. You spend a lot less time tearing up drywall, busting up slabs, looking up above ceiling tile, um, just to see what's there and see what needs to be done. Um, and you, you've, you can kind of minimize that and make it more efficient where the only time you're shutting down your facility is whenever you're doing your actual operations and maintenance work. Um, so, you know, providing value on that 70% versus the 30% with the O&M costs, but also you're minimizing the downtime in your facility, which means that 90% cost, the, uh, the human capital cost, they're able to go back in to this room, start using it as soon as possible and uh, start adding value to your organization so you can get that ROI. Um, so you can see this really helps, uh, you know, instead of open space becoming just an archival photo documentation tool of how the uh, have your facility looked at project completion, you can use field notes to kind of help uh, make your open space capture a living, breathing document of how your facility currently looks. So you can see I can come in here and I, I can have an active record of all the facilities management work being performed in my facility. I can open this up and if I'm the person that's responsible for coming in here and upsizing this duct, let's say it's complete. I can come in here and comment that this has been completed. Hit send, it'll tell me who said it and when they sent it. So you can really easily track issues. Uh, maybe if I needed additional clarification or if I had any questions, I can also have conversations within here. So a really easy way to track your facilities management uh, issues and items going on within your facility. Um, I can also come in here and mark it as complete. So you can see that all of your facilities management items that have been complete, there's nothing outstanding. And then I can also come in here and attach a file uh, of a picture showing that the duct has been upsized. Um, by the way, all of this is doable in the field as well. So if you have a phone or a tablet and you're working out live and you just wanna snap a quick picture showing that it's been complete and update it live in the app, you're able to do that. And uh, you can see this gives you an active, you know, photo documentation of what your project's looking like. So even though your most recent open space capture is showing what the above ceiling configuration used to look like, you can use field notes to update your photo documentation, or you can attach completion pictures. And it becomes, you know, kind of like what I said earlier, that living, breathing document, where you can go into a field note and see uh, all work that's been performed on, um, you know, a certain part of your facility, see why it's been performed. And then you can also have photo documentation showing you what it currently looks like. Um, so really uh, awesome way to just kind of have full documentation, not only during design and construction, but also just throughout your building's life cycle. It can make it a lot easier and eliminate a lot of confusion whenever you're coordinating your facilities management tasks. Um, so that uh, is the example that I had to go over. Um, Jack, I can go ahead and pass it back over to you. Uh, you are on mute, Jack. I unmute myself, yeah. Um, thanks, Wes. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm guessing because uh, you used open space in your in your previous construction role, didn't you? Um, did you did you kind of use it for for that kind of thing as well, or was it just pretty much the basic uh, kind of capture for record? Yeah, so um, we were the contractor, so uh, we didn't perform the actual facilities management work, but we did work closely with facilities managers to let them know kind of the benefit they were going to be seeing from it. Um, also, with our, our startup and commissioning process, which is also a part of the, the construction process where the facility manager starts to become more heavily involved, um, we'd go around and for any equipment that needed to be started up, um, we'd go in, we'd create field notes on each of the pieces of equipment, attach the uh, startup and commissioning info for that equipment, uh, making it really easy for our service guys to go in and just easily pull up and see what needs to be done to start up the equipment. But also for the facilities managers, whenever they have access to that open space capture down the road, and they're going to look at a piece of equipment, instead of going through a file explorer and trying to locate exactly where this equipment is that they haven't worked on in 10 years, they can just use open space and, you know, go to the project where the equipment actually is, open up that field note and all the information they need for the equipment is going to be right there. Yeah, I, I think that that final point actually is a, is a really good call out and, um, something that I can certainly speak to as well, having, um, you know, implemented other sort of construction softwares, particularly those common data environments. So, um, you know, you guys on the call, you may be familiar with some of those like Procore, like Autodesk, BIM 360 Docs, um, 
you know, viewpoint. There's all sorts of different solutions out there that, that act as that common data environment for storage of documentation. But they're all, uh, you know, kind of folder structure or, or, or metadata based. And I, and I think that's, you know, a unique sort of spin or approach that open space gives you is the fact that it is so absolutely uh, visual. You know, if, if you want to find um, an O&M manual for a particular piece of equipment or, uh, you know, some sort of certificate uh, to see whether uh, that's still in date. Um, the fact that you don't necessarily have to search through a folder structure or, or, you know, kind of search that metadata, you could literally just walk to that spot and, and find it um, is, is perhaps something that's kind of exciting, but, but also at the same time being able to use those field notes, uh, uh, you know, reports to be able to, to filter it if you like, uh, if you want to, and you want to make it easier. Um, so that's it really guys for our, our sort of talking at you and our, our presenting um, would love to know your your thoughts, your comments, if you've got any questions. Uh, we've not had any come through on the chat um, as of yet. Uh, what I am going to do is go ahead and um, start to promote you guys to um, panelists. So uh, I mentioned way at the start, although you weren't all sort of dialed in then, um, if this works, because it doesn't seem to be working very well at the moment there you go um it is kind of giving you the the permission to to talk there guys and uh i believe to turn on your cameras if you wish as well it's not unmuted you by default or, or turned on your camera by default so don't worry um you know if uh, if you want to stay sort of uh, secret and private um still able to put questions in the chat if that's your preferred method but um yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, and we can have a conversation. Is is this something that you guys are involved with? That sort of facilities management aspect. Do you guys see the the sort of benefit? What questions or comments might you have? Yeah, we've got a, a raised a raised hand. Um, ask to one. There we go. Hey, hey, hello. Uh, thank hello. you, thank you for your uh, thank you for for the very um. Uh, informative uh, presentation. Um, I would like to ask um, because um, uh, you know uh, uh, my name is Bin uh, from Vietnam. Uh, actually, I um, have discussion recently uh, about subscription, uh, but and I know that uh, normally you can have uh, uh, per per uh, projects, but uh, if um, uh, open space can be used uh, for uh, FM stage. Uh, it's going to be very long, and uh, um, then then it should be subscription for 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 a year, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're looking at, uh, are you a current open space user bin? Do you have any kind of agreement with your organization with us at the moment, or are you looking to? Not not uh, not uh, not yet. Uh, I'm um, uh, um, um, now. I I only use a trial version. And I, I think it's pretty good, um, but good. Uh, uh, you know, um, I, uh, I, I work for, for an, uh, a research institute um, uh, belonging to Ministry of Construction. We uh, oversee the, the BIM program in Vietnam. And uh, I think, I think uh, it's a very promising uh, solution, uh, uh, but if, uh, if uh, you intend to, um, uh, to, to, you know, if uh, uh, open space can use uh, in MM stage, uh, then uh, uh, I mean the subscription uh, need to to be changed uh, to yearly or something uh, because uh, uh, if that uh, if uh, per projects it it a little bit uh, difficult if the projects uh, stop and then uh, um, continue in in uh, MM stage. Right? Yeah. yeah. I can touch on this one, Jack. If you're, if you're, um, yeah, so Ben, so uh, we kind of have um, multiple flavors of contracts that you can purchase uh, for your capturing with us. Uh, the two main mm -hmm. ones is first going to be the project unlimited plan where you pay on a per project basis um, and you don't pay for, you know, the duration of the project. You're not paying for only capturing for a year. You're getting the project unlimited mm -hmm. plan, which means that you get unlimited captures and unlimited users. Uh, for that particular project in open space. Um, so we're not going to, you know, whenever construction ends, we're not going to cut you off if you want to continue to use that project for your facilities management purposes. Um, the oh, other main okay. flavor that we uh, we offer is enterprise, 
Um, so if you have multiple projects with your organization, um, we can kind of do uh, bulk pricing where you get unlimited captures, unlimited, unlimited users across all your projects in your organizations. And since you're, uh, okay. since you're giving us kind of a yearly subscription for all of your projects, you'll get a, a little bit better rate there. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So we'd be, yeah, be happy to take your, your, your details, uh, Ben, and we can put you in touch with one of the um, one of our SDRs or one of our account executives, and they'd be able to provide you all that information that you know um, that you'd be looking for in terms of pricing and durations. They'll let you know the kind of information that we need across from you. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's that's totally doable. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Ben, if you want to um, type your uh, email in the chat, or if you want to send us just a personal message uh, in the chat um, with your email, uh, we can definitely loop you in with the sales team and provide you more information on kind of what we offer uh, for paid contracts. Absolutely. Yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Um, any other comments or, or questions from anybody else there? Any other any other thoughts? Has it been useful? That is, uh, it's probably a key question. Yeah, and uh, we can also open this up. It doesn't have to be facilities management specific as well. If you just have any questions in general with Open Space, uh, you can feel free to ask us. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you like. Anything personal as well. We can tell you our favorite colors or our favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> If there's anything uh, anybody over in the EMEA area wants to know about Texas, uh, you can ask that as well. I'm not sure we're going to get any more. Um, so if uh, if you guys are happy, if you don't have any more, oh, we've had something in the chat. Let's have a look. Oh, that's been your email. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, if there, if there are no more questions, guys, then um, we'll look at closing the session down. But uh, thank you for dialing in. Thank you for taking the time. I uh, hope it was useful. Uh, if, you, uh, if you do want to get in touch, by all means, please do. We're always happy to, to help you out with anything. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. So I'll close things down. Um, thank you to Wesley. Fantastic, as always. Thank you, Jack. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, we appreciate it. And of course, reach out to us anytime. Uh, if you ever have any questions or need any help with Open Space, um, you can reach us at support at openspace.ai. And then there's Jack and I. Uh, Jack is, um, are you Jack.Earnshaw? I am Jack. Yeah, because we have more than one Jack. So he's <laughs> Jack.Earnshaw at openspace.ai. And uh, I'm just Wesley at openspace.ai. Um, and feel free to shoot us an email anytime if you have any questions. There you go. Okay. Thanks a lot then, guys. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful day and hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.